Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the Luxor in Las Vegas where we're checking out the public house. Super happy to have you along, let's head inside. All right, everyone, and here we are seated at the public house. A very lively sports bar here at the Luxor Casino. Nice big screens for your favorite sports programming. Comfortable boots and tables. It looks like a pretty good place to enjoy the game and catch the vibes. I like it here. Now, regardless of the vibes, I'm all about the food. So let's take a look at what they have to eat, starting with the drinks. And here is your drink menu at the public house. You've got draft beers and specialty cocktails on the back here. Feel free to take a pause in the video if you'd like to take a look for your favorite drink. You've got uh, bottles and cans down here. Your wine list over here. All of these uh, beers. And your non-alcoholics here as well. Trying my best to keep you guys from the glare here, but that's the beer menu. Now you all know I'm not too much of a drinker, so today I'll just be sticking to the food. Let's see what they've got to eat next. And here is your menu at the public house. Let's take a look at the appetizers first. You've got uh, nachos up at the top there. Oh, poke nachos, that sounds pretty good. Calamari and the like. You've got your uh, soups and salads down here. And then you have burgers and sandwiches. They also have a challenge here. That's kind of crazy. I don't know if I'm gonna do that today. Customize your sandwich in any way you wish. And then you have your chef specialties down here. Ooh, the ribs look pretty good. Yeah, oh look, this is looking pretty good here. You've got uh, wings, fries, and sides. And your desserts here as well. There's your menu. A very enjoyable looking menu here at the public house and I'm certainly looking forward to trying it all out because you know how it goes in my videos. Every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm going to get a nice variety and together we'll see what this one's all about. Appetizers are coming up first, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, now my appetizers just got here and this is looking great, let me give you a view. I got an order of their tuna poke nachos as well as their pepperoni pizza bites, their coconut shrimp, and their Texas style no bean chili. This is all looking really tasty, let's give it a try. First up, I want to try the coconut shrimp. You can actually see the bits of coconut in the breading here, and it feels ultra crispy in my hands. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, you know what, not bad. I actually really love the texture of this particular shrimp. Such a fantastic crisp to that breading. And the tiny fried strands of coconut here are actually providing a little bit of a different crunchy texture. It is fun to eat. Now that's that unfortunate. I do think that the breading is a little bit bland. The coconut flavor is present. However, it's very mild. And in general, I just want some more seasoning and flavor in that breading. And I would say that's because the shrimp inside is actually quite good. A nice briny flavor to that. And while I will say it's a tad chewy, it holds up to the crunch of the batter well. Because because it is a coconut shrimp, I was expecting much more of that sweetness. Although I suppose if I thought of this as just a standard fried shrimp, it's not bad at all. Now it is served alongside two sauces. I'm going to try and dip it into this uh, red one first. I imagine this is something like a sweet chili sauce. Let's see how it tastes. Yeah, that's actually pretty tasty. It is very much like a sweet chili sauce, although they definitely emphasize the heat here. There's a lingering spice that's actually very pleasant. I think if the sweetness of the coconut in the shrimp was a little bit brighter, it would create a really nice balanced harmony along with the sauce. There is a bit of a sweet tanginess up front with that sauce, but then it ultimately leads to a much spicier note. Not a bad sauce at all, I like that one. We'll try dipping it into this cream sauce as well. And let's give this a try. Yes, that's pretty good. Very much just a spicy aioli here. And while it is creamy and rich, I don't know if I particularly like it on the shrimp. The faint sweet elements of the coconut are definitely lost when you use this particular sauce. While it's emphasized a little bit more when it comes to that sweet chili sauce. I'm definitely leaning toward the sweet chili sauce when it comes to the options. Next up, the pepperoni pizza bites. Now, this is piping hot as I'm holding it, but I'm guessing this is basically a pizza egg roll. It's served alongside two sauces, but I wanna try it straight up first. Let's see how it is. Oh, you know what, that's fine. 
a really crispy egg roll skin here. Excellent fry job, I actually really love the texture. Now there is a very rich cheese inside, providing a bit of a gooey creaminess. And the pepperoni in here certainly gives that trademark salty flavor. Now while I know there are two dipping sauces, there's no sauce in this, so it leans very dry. The only real moisture is coming a bit from that cheese. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of this one on its own. I guess we'll have to give the sauces a try to see. First up, we'll dip it into the classic marinara sauce here. I have a pretty decent idea of how this is going to taste. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, you know what? Not bad. Now this is a very thick but sweet marinara sauce. It certainly brightens up this pizza egg roll because it definitely needs the moisture. That said, I do think the marinara sauce is pretty average. You get a little bit of sweetness there, but I think I would definitely appreciate some more garlic. And while the seasoning is okay, I think in general the marinara sauce is very plain. I guess ultimately outside of the crispy egg roll texture, dipping it into that marinara sauce is giving you a very basic pizza flavor. And we'll try dipping it into this cream sauce next. And we'll see how this is. And I'm a little torn on this one. I actually think it's a very good sauce. It's something like a spicy ranch dressing. There's a nice heat up front, but it does lead to a cool, tangy, and creamy flavor afterwards. Honestly, it's actually quite a good sauce. I guess my only issue is, unfortunately, I don't really like it with this particular appetizer. While I understand the concept of dipping pizza into ranch, which I happen to love, by the way, without the pizza sauce element already here, it ends up overpowering the rest of the flavors, and so you really only end up tasting that spicy ranch. You know, in general, I'd say that appetizer is just okay. I don't know if I'll get that one again. Alrighty, next up, I'm trying their Texas chili. Now, this is a no-bean chili topped with cheese and served alongside chips for dipping. And hopefully this is good. Let's give it a try. Yeah, you know what? That's pretty good. Now, the tortilla chips here are definitely store-bought. And unfortunately, they don't impart a ton of corn flavor. They are fresh, however, and not stale at all. So they have a good crisp to them. And I guess ultimately, that's kind of the baseline that you want for your chips in a dish like this. This is a pretty flavorful chili here. It is a very meaty style Texas chili. Tons of ground beef in every bite. There's a good smoky seasoning blend in this chili, and I really wouldn't call it spicy. It's very approachable. You get a little bit of additional richness coming from the cheese on top, and in general, this is a pretty tasty appetizer. No serious complaints. All right, everyone, and the last appetizer I'm trying today are gonna be the tuna poke nachos. Definitely a lot going on on these tuna poke nachos, and I've got a pretty even distribution of the toppings on this chip. Let's see how this is. You know, unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of this one. Now, these are the same tortilla chips that they use for the chili. Store-bought, not a ton of flavor, but they are crispy. The tuna is a little bit softer than I would prefer it to be. I would appreciate it if it was a little bit more firm. While it isn't disintegrating, I would say it's not as satisfying to eat. There is a spicy aioli here providing a little bit of a creaminess to the overall bite. And then there's something like an eel sauce that's providing such a pungent sweetness. Now the issue is that not all the flavors are balancing very well. You kind of taste every individual element on their own. And then depending on whether or not you get one of these jalapenos on your chip, there's actually a very spicy aftertaste. It's odd because I know all of these flavors should go together, but I think each of the elements here skew a direction just far away enough from each other where it's not balancing properly for me. While I wouldn't say it's bad, I'm just not a fan of this one. All right, everyone, now that does it for all of the appetizers I'm trying today. I'm gonna continue working on this and then we'll try some handhelds next. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Now, welcome back everyone. My handhelds just got here and this is looking great. Let me give you a view. I got their standard cheeseburger as well as their chicken BLT. And I also got their Philly cheesesteak. Now all of them come with fries, however you can upgrade to loaded or truffle fries, so I decided to try all three. This is all looking really great, time to give it a try. Now first up, we're gonna try the standard. Now this is a huge double cheeseburger with grilled onions and it looks really fantastic. Let's see how this is. Yeah, that's a very good burger. A nice soft bun here with a solid toast job on it, also imparting a little bit of a sweet flavor, a solid burger bun here. Having these double meat patties makes this burger really satisfying, so juicy and meaty. And this is a very well seasoned ground beef, burger cooked to a medium exactly the way I asked. Really great job. There's something like a tangy burger sauce in here, very akin to a Thousand Island. And the produce is also relatively fresh, I don't have any complaints with it. 
There's a beautiful caramelized sweetness coming from those onions in the middle of the burger. And it's a very nice accenting flavor to the overall burger. A very delicious classic cheeseburger here. I like that one. And I'm gonna try the accompanying french fries. Piping hot and crispy in my hands. Let's see how these taste. Oh yeah, those are fine. A very nice crispy french fry here. Good crunch on that exterior. And a nice potato flavor coming from the center. Really well seasoned. No bland french fries here, and in general these are really solid, no complaints with the french fries. Alrighty, next up I'm going in the Philly cheesesteak. A very big steak sandwich here. I'm certainly in the mood for a good steak, let's see how this is. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty tasty cheesesteak right there. A very good bread here for this sandwich. Incredibly airy and soft in the center. And while it has been baked to a beautiful golden brown, there's not a ton of crisp to that exterior, really leading to a very soft sandwich loaf. This is a very good ribeye steak in the center of the sandwich. It's tender and juicy. A good simple seasoning blend with an emphasis on the black pepper. It actually gives a very nice flavor. Though there is a very gooey cheese in here, I can't say that I particularly taste it too much but you definitely get a nice creamy texture from it. I love the earthiness of the mushrooms in this sandwich as well as the sweetness coming from the caramelized onions. And they've also taken the time to properly cook down these peppers, allowing their natural sweetness to really come through in the sandwich. I actually don't have any serious complaints. This is a very good Philly cheesesteak. And the side that I'm gonna try along with the Philly cheesesteak are these truffle fries. I can definitely smell the truffle fries from a mile away. And typically I'm not a huge fan of this particular style, but I'm certainly gonna be open-minded today. Let's see how these are. You know what, not bad. As mentioned, I'm typically not a fan of truffle oil because it's very overpowering, even with very light applications. I will say though that the flavors are much more accented here and you don't actually get overwhelmed by it. They did a good job with the amount of truffle they added. A little bit of floral freshness coming from that parsley and there is some grated cheese here providing a little bit of an additional salty hit. I still don't think these would be my particular go-to french fries, but for truffle french fries, I'm not offended at all. These are pretty solid. All right, everyone, and the last sandwich I'm going in on today is the chicken BLT. This is a very big chicken sandwich with bacon, lettuce, tomato, hence the name, and it does look very good. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, you know what, that's pretty good. There's so much flavor coming from this ciabatta bun. They finished it off with some cheese on top, and it has a very soft, spongy texture. Actually, I'm quite a fan of this cheese ciabatta bread. Now, unfortunately, the chicken in the center is a bit dry. While it's decently seasoned and imparting a good chicken flavor, it is just a tad tough from not having enough moisture. There's a nice salty hit coming from the bacon here. The lettuce is crisp and fresh here. I really haven't had any issues with the produce here at the public house. Now, they are using a pepper jack cheese inside, which is providing a little bit of heat in addition to its richness. And I believe that same spicy aioli that we saw from the appetizers is here as well, providing a little bit of additional heat. Not a bad sandwich at all. If that chicken was a little bit juicier, this would have been really good. All right, everyone. Now the last bite I'm trying from this first round of entrees is going to be the loaded fries. Now, again, you can upgrade your fries to either truffle or loaded fries. And so these are the loaded fries with cheese, bacon, and some chives. This is looking really rich. Let's give it a shot. Oh, yeah, that's pretty tasty. It is good that they have the basic french fry down here at the public house because it really makes the upgraded french fries that much more worth it. Now I happen to really like this particular cheese sauce. I think it's been mixed a little bit with that spicy aioli from before. And so there's a little bit of a kick to this cheese sauce, but more as an aftertaste after you're done with its rich flavors. The bacon in this particular dish is not only salty, but it actually has a bit more of a smoky quality. It's providing an additional dimension to this particular dish that actually is very enjoyable. A little bit of bite coming from those green onions and overall just a very tasty dish. All right, everyone, now that's the first round of entrees. I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple more bites and box this all up to go because we've got another round of food coming. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Now my last round of entrees are here and this is looking great. Let me give you a view. I got their fish and chips as well as their salmon dish and a half order of their ribs. I'm definitely starting to fill up, but this is all looking good as well, so time to give it a try. First up, I'm trying their salmon. It looks like a very nice blackened salmon here with some great smelling spices. Let's give it a shot. Okay, you know what, that's really good. 
a beautiful cook to the salmon fish, such a crispy skin on the outside, and moist flaky flesh in the center. My hat's off to the chef, they absolutely nailed the cook. I actually love the flavors that play here with the salmon. Not only do you get those mild flavors of the salmon fish itself, as well as that smoky, savory flavor coming from the Cajun spice mix, but there's a very light sweetness coming from something like honey here, as well as nice citrus levels from some lime. All of the flavors are playing together in harmony very well, making for a very delicious salmon dish. I'm a fan of this one. Next up, we'll try some of the rice that comes as a side. Nice fork full of the wild rice here. Let's give it a try. You know what, not bad. It's definitely a little bit harder than I prefer my rice to be, but I think that's actually due to the fact that it's wild rice, giving it a little bit more of that rustic texture. Certainly a nice earthy flavor when it comes to this wild rice, and it is nicely seasoned in general. I don't have any serious complaints, this is fine rice. And the other side to try from our salmon is gonna be the broccolini. It definitely had a good feel to it as I forked it. Let's see how this is. Very healthy. I'm pretty sure this is just bland broccolini. I don't even believe there's salt on this. It does have a decent cook on it though. It is still relatively firm. A nice little snap on the outside as you bite into it, but still a soft enough center where you're not exactly fighting with it to put it down. You know, it is a tad bland, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's broccolini, it's good for you. Okie doke, next up, we're going in on their fish and chips. Served alongside fries, as well as some coleslaw. I'm gonna dip the fish into this tartar sauce here. And we'll give it a try. Oh yeah, that's great. A beautiful fry job to that fish. Ultra crispy exterior, with a very flaky, moist fish center. A very mild white fish flavor here, and alongside a well-seasoned crispy batter, as a base, this is a very good piece of fried fish. I don't believe this tartar sauce is homemade. It tastes very much like something that might have come out of a jar, but it is creamy and rich with a little bit of sour tang to it, and it goes along very well with the fish here. I don't have any serious complaints. This is a solid entry for fish and chips. Now, I've already tried the French fries here at the public house, so the other side that I'm going in on is the coleslaw. Let's see how this is. Oh yeah, that's a very good coleslaw. Much lighter than I thought it was gonna be. Despite the fact that there's a very creamy dressing on it, it's not as heavy as one would expect. There's a very sweet flavor to this particular coleslaw. I wanna say it's almost borderline too sweet, but it's actually counterbalanced very well with the amount of vinegar in here providing some tang, ultimately balancing out to a very enjoyable flavor. Solid produce here as well. This is honestly a pretty good coleslaw here. All right, everyone, now the last entree I'm trying today are gonna be the barbecued ribs. Got a half rack of ribs here and a really nice bone. Absolutely smothered in barbecue sauce. Let's see how this is. Hmm. Yeah, you know what, pretty good. A very meaty rib here, a nice tasty pork meat on that rib. I wouldn't exactly call it fall apart tender. There's a bit of a chew to it but it's a bit of a meatier chew. It's actually pretty satisfying. A pretty straightforward seasoning blend on these ribs. I wanna say it's probably the usual suspects like salt, pepper, garlic, onions, as well as maybe some paprika for smokiness. The majority of the flavors here are actually coming from this very delicious barbecue sauce. It's a very smoky and tangy barbecue sauce, not as sweet as I was initially anticipating with the color. You can almost taste the woodiness to it in the same way that you can taste the oak barrel from whiskey. It's a very enjoyable flavor. Not exactly the most tender rib I've ever had, but a solid entry in the barbecued ribs here at the public house. No serious complaints. All right, everyone, now I've already tried the coleslaw and the fries, so the last side to try today is gonna be the cornbread. And I'm really starting to get full here, so I'm glad this is coming to the end. Let's see how this is. Ooh, I am not a fan of that. Now, I wouldn't exactly call this cornbread stale, but it's certainly flirting with that line. It's definitely missing some moisture, and it's far too crumbly to be enjoyable. Now this is a jalapeno cornbread, however the jalapeno flavor is very muddled. It's oddly salty in the way that a sardine or an anchovy would taste. The flavors here aren't all that great, the texture is just not enjoyable, I'm not a fan of this one. Alright everyone, now that's gonna do it for all the food today, I'm absolutely stuffed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some boxes and get all this for takeaway, then we'll go in on some dessert. Don't go anywhere because sweets are coming up next.
Welcome back, my friends. Now it's time to cap off this meal with a little bit of dessert, and I got the cheesecake today. Several interesting options here at the public house, however, I just want something very classic, and so cheesecake is always my go-to, and I got a nice forkful here. Let's see how this tastes. Oh yeah, that's quite good. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this was homemade or store-bought, but if it was store-bought and frozen, they certainly gave enough time to thaw because the cake has a very nice creamy texture. The graham cracker crust here has a very nice nutty sweetness, and they've incorporated a nice amount of butter into that crust because it has a great richness. The strawberry sauce that it's served alongside is actually very flavorful. If this particular strawberry sauce comes from a jar, I'd certainly like to know which one it is because I think I would use it at home very sweet it's just a little bit tart with a nice thick consistency and imparting a very delicious strawberry flavor not bad at all i quite like the cheesecake here all right my friends now that does it for my dinner here at the public house at the luxor las vegas now my dinner this evening came out to a little under 300 dollars today before tip and yeah not a bad meal at all i didn't think any of the appetizers were particularly incredible however i did enjoy the chili with chips i really like both their standard burger as well as the philly cheesesteak today and I didn't actually have too many issues with any of the entrees either. And it was really only that cornbread muffin that I was not a fan of at all. All in all, I think if you're staying here at the Luxor and you're looking for some good pub food, you can get a decent meal here at the public house. All right, everyone. Now that does it for my Saturday video here on the Las Vegas Strip. Coming this Tuesday, we're going to be checking out another local eatery here in the Valley. Hopefully you'll return for that one. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend. And I hope you enjoy Vegas with me, Shin. Bye.